Just as every molecule is the product of individual atoms, every number is either prime or is the product of primes. This is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. A number is prime if the only numbers that divide it, leaving no remainders, are itself and one. We have two, three, five and so on. A number that isn't prime is called composite because it's composed of two or more numbers multiplied together. For example, 12 is equal to 3 times 4 and 38 is equal to 2 times 19. The fundamental theorem states that any number is either prime or is the product of primes. So from before we had 12 equals 3 times 4, but we can break it down further to give 12 is equal to 3 times 2 times 2, 3 and 2 being prime numbers. Furthermore, that product is unique, meaning that there aren't another set of prime numbers you can multiply together to get 12, only 3, 2 and 2. How do we find these prime factors? Well, given a number, say 90, we start with the smallest prime, 2, and check if it divides 90. It does, giving 45. We then take 45 and find the smallest prime number that divides that. And 45 divided by 3 gives 15. As it happens, 15 is also divisible by 3 to give 3 and 5. Now, 3 and 5 are both prime, so nothing else will divide them, and so we stop here. As you can see, we've pulled out the prime factors of 90, 2, 3, 3 and 5. But to be honest though, we didn't have to be so organised as to start with the smallest prime numbers and factor them out in order. As long as we keep factoring, eventually we'll get the same set of prime numbers. Here I just decided to factor 90 into 9 and 10 to begin with. And so all the numbers are either prime or composite, and composite numbers can be factorised into products of prime numbers. But now I want to address the part where I said that these prime products are unique. We can start by assuming the opposite, that they're not unique. So let x be some number and p1 to pn be the prime factorisation of x. But let's also say that there's a different prime factorisation of x, p1 prime to pn prime. Apologies for the confusing notation by the way, this little dash above p1 to pn is called prime and that's totally unrelated to prime numbers. So p1 prime to pn prime is our second prime factorisation of x. And so these two products must be equal since they're both equal to x. What we can do now is divide both sides by p1. Since the left hand side is just a product of primes, it must be an integer. Therefore, the right hand side must also be an integer. But since the p1 prime to pn prime are all prime numbers, we wouldn't get an integer unless one of them is equal to p1. If that doesn't make sense, pause the video and convince yourself that if a product of primes divided by another prime is an integer, then the denominator must also be one of the factors in the numerator. Let's just say p1 prime is the one that equals p1. It doesn't really matter which one since it could have been any, but let's carry on with the proof. We now do the same thing with p2, we we'll bring it over to the right hand side. And now, like before, this is an integer, so one of the p2 prime to pn prime must equal p2. And like before, we'll just say that it's p2 prime just to make things easier. So p1 is equal to p1 prime, p2 is equal to p2 prime, and carrying on like this, we end up with all the p1 to pn equal to all the p1 prime to pn prime. And this contradicts our original assumption that the two prime factorizations are different. That is, we've proved there's one unique prime factorization of our original x. Okay, but some of you might have noticed I just assumed the two different prime factorizations of x had the same number of primes. We could have said, let x be the product of p1 to pn, and also let x be the product of p1 prime to pm prime, where in this case m is greater than n. This time, if we go through the same process of dividing out the factors of the left hand side, this time we're left with 1 on the left hand side, but something that's definitely not 1 on the right. This contradicts the assumption that a number 
can have two different prime factorizations with more primes in one of them. So this is why primes can be considered the atoms of the numbers, or to put it another way, if there were no primes, there'd be no numbers. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.